Welcome to Structure Fishing. As Buck Perry says, knowledge is the key to fishing success. Structure Fishing is a show that is packed with fishing knowledge. Regardless of your skill level or where you fish or what you fish for, you will learn something on each show that will help you catch more fish. We'll take you on the water and into the classroom. Let's see what we have for you on today's show. Coming up later on HLS News, a ruled record goal I caught in North Dakota. Stay tuned for that full story and more later on in the show. Coming up in the classroom, I'll be continuing our discussion on structure. On this part four, we'll be discussing the one type of structure situation that will teach you the most about fish movements and migrations. But right now, we're going on the water to the Pinwall Flowage. The Pinwall Flowage is the second largest lake in Wisconsin and is a reservoir off the Wisconsin River system. We'll start the show fishing with my daughter Emily, catching some white bass, and then with Casey catching some more walleyes. Here we go, we got the first fish of the trip. What do you think you got there, Em? I don't know, probably a white bass. You think white bass? I don't know. I'm thinking white bass or a walleye. Let's see. You still do you feel that fish fighting? Yeah. Oh, it's a nice walleye, Em. Ooh. Nice fish, Em. Right, that's a nice 18 inch walleye. That's a good way to start the day, especially with these tough cold front conditions you see here. This is the first day after a cold front, tough conditions out here, but nice first walleye. 18 inch or a nice fish, Sam. What do you think? Pretty cool. Hey, we just hooked our second fish, which is uh, pretty good here with these cold front conditions. How you doing, Em? Good. I, how's that fish feel? It's fighting. Is it bigger than the other one? Maybe. Good job there. Just keep that line. Just keep some pressure on that line. I think you got a real nice one. I'm gonna get the net ready here. I'm out on a fishing trip with my girl M on Lake Petenwell. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Oops. Oops, the reel came off. That's going on the bloopers. <laughs> yeah, here. I can't get it. Uh, the reel. Oh, I got the fish. That is a nice walleye. Beautiful walleye, and that's probably that's over the slot. We gotta let him go, but let's see what happened here. The the reel came out of the pole. The fish. How did it happen? The fish pulled really hard on you. Yeah. All right, well, let me get that fish out of the net. We can show everybody. Okay. You measure that's a 24 and a half inch walleye. Nice fish. He's over the slot, so we gotta let him go. Here, why don't you reach over to the side of the boat here, Em? You know how to let that go? How to release it? Oop. Oh, I saw that you had hit and you lost them. Don't worry. Nope. When you feel that fish pull, and um, pull back on your line so you can set the hook. You just had a couple hits, didn't you? Oh, there you go. Oh, nice little white bass. All right, good job, man. <laughs> we'll get him off the hook. You make that same cast again. Em's in the casting position here. Good job. Yeah, hit right in front of the boat. Yeah, we got a really good casting position here. We got the boat position just right in front of that school you're casting into him and then let it sink and just retrieving it back to the boat and these fish are relating <clears throat> these fish are right on a uh, right on the brake line eh? there's a tree right at the uh, top of the brake line and uh, these uh, school of white bass and crappies are uh, all over it now when you feel that fish ticket them just you want to set that hook a little bit Oh, there she is. She's got one again. Way to go, Em. I gotta have to tighten up that drag a little bit. Let's see if you got a white bass or a crappie on this one. I gotta tighten that drag up. You got that drag a little too loose there. Oh, and then another white bass. Oh, you got two. You got a double. Oh, again. <laughs> Real up, Em. You got a double. That's the benefits of fishing these two jigs on here. You get two fish at a time, Em. Way to go. Good job. It's fighting really hard. Yeah! <laughs> you got another double. <coughs> Good job, Em. These little white bass could be a lot of fun, especially when you get doubles like that, Em. 
Thumbs up here, Em. Good job. <laughs> Another double. This is my third double. That's, yeah, it's your third double. Way I to go. seven fish. All right. Hey, Josh, I, uh, I don't say this often enough, but I think you are a great kid. And you mean the world to me. You know that, right? When you take them fishing with America's favorite reel, it says a lot. The all-new Zebco 33 family of reels. Introducing the next generation of Sonar. Sonar Phone by Vexlar, the world's first smart device sonar. Download the free app. Try the demo feature and see why Sonar Phone will rival the performance of Sonar systems costing hundreds more. The Sonar Phone does not require cell phone coverage. You create your own Wi-Fi hotspot and can share with your friends. Download the free app today. And for a limited time, with any purchase of a Sonar Phone, you get a free smartphone armband. That's the Sonar Phone by Vexlar. Fish on! Fish on! Fish on? Fish on! Fish on! We're hearing reports of a fish on. Fish on! Ooh, fish on. Fish on, fish on, fish on. Fish on! Parents, to plan your family's day on the water, visit takemefishing.org. Hey, welcome to the classroom. Today we're going to continue our discussion on structure, part four. In past classroom sessions, we talked about structure. We said structure was a shape or feature of the bottom that was different from the surrounding area. Structure is made up of breaks and brake lines. The fish will pause or stop at the breaks and the brake lines. This is the key to finding the fish, the breaks and the brake lines. In an earlier classroom session, we said that the fish will not cross a flat that is void of breaks or brake lines. We also said that the most productive structures will have immediate access to the deepest water in the area that you're fishing. We're going to talk about a structure situation that will sum up everything we talked about in the past. And this structure situation will give you a better understanding of how fish move and migrate on structure. This situation is called a delta. You'll find this delta structure situation in reservoirs. Most reservoirs that contain delta type structures will be found in lowland and flatland type reservoirs. Buck Perry says this type of structure situation will teach you more about fish movements than any other structure situation. This is what a delta structure situation will look like. You'll have ridges or humps along the main channel. The ridges or humps may be on one side or both sides of the channel. These ridges or humps occur naturally along the channel caused by the growth that is normally found along the banks of a stream. In some cases, these humps or ridges are very pronounced and sometimes there will be just a slight hump present. After the ridge or hump, there will be a flat, sometimes very wide, till you reach the short shoreline bars. Here's a top view of this delta situation. As you can see, there can be a quite a distance between the delta humps and the shoreline bars. The home of the fish will be in the channel. What will the migration route be? It would be normal for the fish to move to the top of the hump or the ridge, but if the weather and water conditions allow for the fish to move shallower than the hump, then the hump or ridge will become a dead end. You might ask why. The fish will not migrate down the backside of a hump or across the flat. If they want to migrate shallower, then the hump will become a dead end. Most fish, especially largemouth bass, need to have structures that will go all the way to the shallows. They may not migrate to the shallows often, but the best structures will need to go to the shallows to be very productive. The key to fishing a reservoir with a delta situation will be to find the side feeder cuts. Anytime two streams or a channel meet, this will be a primary to fish in any lake or reservoir. Here's a section of a reservoir with a delta situation with a side feeder stream. The side feeder stream will have breaks and break lines that will go out to the main channel through the flats to the shoreline bars. This is the area you want to concentrate your fishing efforts. If we were to fish this area, we would start by checking the shoreline bars created by the side feeder stream. If there are no fish present, we would check the breaks and the break lines along the side feeder channel out to the main channel. We would then spend our efforts working the structures created where the side feeder stream meets the main channel. 
if we did not catch any fish or there appears that there has not been a movement yet, we would concentrate our efforts where the main channel and a side feeder channel meet. If these structures are too deep for us to present our lures effectively, then we can either wait for the fish to move or do some migrating ourselves and move towards the headwaters till the depths become reachable for us. Most all reservoirs in the Tennessee River system have many delta situations. Here's part of an avionics map of Gunnersville Lake. You can clearly see the delta situation present. This lake is rated as one of the best bass lakes. We would check the humps along the main channel, but we would want to spend most of our time fishing where the side feeder streams meet the main channel. Here is where you want to spend most of your time. And remember, you can have structure with no fish, but you always have fish on structure. For more information on this classroom subject, as well as any others, check out structurefishing.com slash education. And I think this is a walleye. It's finding pretty good. If it is walleye, it's a decent one. The average size walleye they catch here is around like 18, 17 inches. So, let's see what it is. Oh, 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 it's a big one. It's a really big one. Let's get the net, Casey. You suck pretty good. You got the net there? Really good one. Good fish, Casey. Let's see how long he is. He's probably in the flat and we're probably going to have to let him go. Yeah. Let's get the hook out, measure him, and see. Hey. Hey, good fish. This walleye is 24 inches and it's over the slot limit, so we're gonna have to let this walleye go. Nice walleye, Casey. There she go. If this is a walleye, it's a huge walleye. Hopefully it's not a catfish, because sometimes over the last few years you can catch a uh, catfish too. Hopefully You're this is right a on that brake line. Yeah, you got, I know I said this last season, but you gotta be right on that bike line. So it's not a catfish, is it a walleye? Yup! Got a nice walleye there. He's barely hooked. He's barely hooked there. What? Uh oh. He's on the side of the net. Let me help you here. All right. A little tricky to get inside the net. They're good fish, Casey. Another good one. Thanks. We're not getting many fish today, but the when we do get one, it's a nice one. Hey, this is our walleye that we just caught. It's over the slop limit, to, uh, 23 inches. So let's let this walleye go. Really nice walleye. Unlock the power of HDS with your fingertips. The power to find a needle in a haystack. You will outsmart the fish. Get there first with confidence and always stay one step ahead of Mother Nature. Find, navigate, dominate with the new HDS Gen 2 Touch from Lowrance. Meet America's favorite streaming players. The biggest streaming channel lineup. Over 200,000 movies and TV episodes. Roku, now this is TV. Do you find yourself lost on the water? Have you ever looked to see where the other fishermen are fishing? Are you looking to better understand fish movements and how fish use structure? It's a fact that learning to eliminate unproductive water quickly is a major key in fishing success. Do you want to feel comfortable on any lake you fish? Then hire a certified structure fishing instructor today. Jerry and John are certified structure fishing instructors through the Buck Perry Training Center. These CSIs will go out to your lake and teach you proper lure presentation, how to interpret a map, how to find and locate productive structure, 
They'll give you your own personalized instruction, both on and off the water. Past students include professional guides, tournament anglers, and regular weekend warriors seeking to better understand structure. Both John and Jerry fish the waters throughout the Midwest and beyond. Jerry's home base is Northern Illinois, and John resides in North Central Indiana. Instruction rates vary on distance traveled and days of instruction. Please contact John or Jerry to schedule your own personal instruction. To catch a uh, slow average fish, let me just find a score here. So what I like to do is I like to sink it to the bottom. And if it's 14, like 16 feet, you want to count to, you want to let out some line, and then you want to count to 10. ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now these fish want a really slow speed. So what you're gonna do is you wanna reel it in until you feel your weight. It's like your lure. Then what you wanna do is you wanna jerk it a little bit. Keep on jerking it. There, right there, boom, that's how you do it. Pretty nice one. Look, look at this. Huh? See, that's how structure fishing does it. One cast, one fish. Boom. But you have to, with this soft bait or jig that you're using, you have to let it get the right depth control to get these fish on if there's a school or scattered out fish. So I'm going to cast here. Sorry. There we go. I'm going to cast. Remember, a little, a little, little line to get that right depth control. And now I'm letting it sink for 10 seconds. Eight, nine, ten. So remember, you have to reel in the line until you feel your bait. So let's feel it. And then, now that I feel my bait, I'm going to keep on jerking it. And when you jerk it, you're gonna reel in the extra line. You're giving it a slow speed control, right? Yeah, because the fish don't, um, for some reason they want a slow speed control. Because, oh, got one. So, because, because um, fish want a really slow speed control. I don't know why, but. Let's see what we have here. What? That's a nice walleye. Right, we, yeah, we had a slow day out here at Petenwall. We got a few fish trolling. Um, you know, we got a couple of big ones over the slat and a lot under the slat, but we're catching more fish now because we went to casting. We found out that the fish are really want a slow speed control. Is that right, Casey? Yes. So what I do is I reel it in, remember, count to 10 first. After you and the yeah. reason you're counting to 10 is to let your lure sink to the bottom yeah. for uh, so you can get the right depth control. And you know, because this structure, it holds a lot of trees, so I'm snagged now. Uh, let me try to get it out. This is, this is humongous fish. I thought I had a snag. What do you got down there, Casey? I don't know. This is all, this, this is your... Holy cow! Oh, it's a nice walleye. Wait, wait get, get the net for him, okay? He jugged it. Good thing he's hooked good. Here, 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 hold the net. I gotta open this up, get it out, and it's stuck. Okay. It's stuck on the rod hole. <laughs> nice one, Casey. Oh, and here. I forgot to tell you what we're um, using. We're using a... Uh, Berkeley, it's kind of like a gulp minnow, but it's a Berkeley minnow, and we're just 
you know, with the jig on there. You're getting right depth and speed jig. control. Yeah. Boy, Casey, I think this is your fifth fish and about six casts. You're getting one almost every cast. Yeah. Almost every single cast because there's um tree stumps out there. and a Right lot, on the brake line. Yeah, so, right on the brake line. So you can get a lot of snags right, well, there let's too. Get that hook, let's get the hook out there and make another cast there. Yeah. Good day, I'm Rob Burgundy, and this is what's happening on your HLS News. There is a new world record gold eye that was caught in North Dakota by nine-year-old Braden. Braden was fishing on Lake Autobahn out of his canoe with his six-year-old cousin. When his father saw the fish, he immediately went to have it weighed. Not only was it a state record, but it beat the world record. Braden's fish weighed in at four pounds, three ounces, beating the old world record of three pounds, 13 ounces, caught in 1987. Gold eyes are not commonly caught due to their smaller size. They are mostly commercially harvested and primarily served smoked. Hmm. For the latest in outdoor camping, Pod has developed community camping. Pod tents are a new idea of camping that uses tunnels to connect between different sized dome tents, creating a hamster-like habit trail tent house. The tents are constructed by using durable flammability tested ripstop nylon with tape seams and are supported by aluminum and steel poles. The larger pod is roomy enough to sleep eight people to make it the center of your tent house or social area. The smaller pod is more of a cozy bedroom tent sleeping four. Tunnels zip in place between the tents connecting it in different configurations to meet your outdoor living requirements. For more information, please visit podtents.com. Here's a list of the top 10 consumed seafoods eaten in the United States. 10 is clams, 9 is crab, 8 catfish, 7 cod, 6 is panagas. have no idea what that is, but it sounds tasty. 5 is pollock, 4 tilapia, 3 canned tuna, number 2 is salmon, and the number 1 most consumed seafood is shrimp. That's your hook, line, and sinker news. You stay safe, viewers. I'm Rob Burgundy. As Buck Perry says, we should think of our lures as tools. When it comes to really big fish, we need the best tool for the job. Big fish want big lures, and the bigger the fish are, the more reluctant they are to leave their deep water sanctuary. Introducing the JB series. Best used as a trolling lure, the JBs are designed to control depth and speed. The JB1 is 7 inches long and is designed for depths ranging from 15 to 30 feet at moderate speed control. The JB2 is 6.5 inches long and designed for extra depth control and can easily be worked from 20 feet to 70 foot depths with moderate to fast speed control. They are designed to run free and to bump the bottom. The ability to bump the bottom will even trigger the dormant and non-chasing fish to strike. Both JB lures are made from high quality stainless steel construction and are made in the USA. For more information and to order, visit johnnyb-lures.com. Before heading to your boat and every time you leave the dock, have all the detailed bottom structure you need to target fish, offshore humps, ledges, creek channels, road beds, shown with the most accurate contour lines from Navionics. And it just keeps getting better with sonar charts. Submit your sonar logs for better local charts. The freshest data every day for your chart plotter and mobile device. View our charts online at Navionics.com. As Buck says, knowledge is the key to fishing success. Start your success now by attending the Structure Fishing Workshop. This six-hour workshop will cover the basic movements of the fish, controls and tools, weather and water, structure breaks and break lines, lure presentation and mapping and interpretation. Cost is $60 per adult and $80 for parent and child. Workshop will be held on Tuesday nights, March 24th, the 31st and April 7th from 7 to 9 p.m. at Cabela's in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. For more information and to register, visit www.structurefishing.com. XI-5 from Motor Guide, a wireless trolling motor engineered for anglers by anglers, delivering key performance attributes with power, toughness, stealthy, quiet operation. And for you control freaks, our optional pinpoint GPS navigation system lets you position your boat precisely where the fish are, instantaneously, accurately, built to earn you bragging rights. Meet the all new XI-5, only from Motor Guide. Folks, you want a kiss, you want some wine, close the bell. It's all about depth and speed control. Yes, so 
if you haven't caught that many fish today and then you're just reeling in your lure when you're trolling and you catch one what you want to do is you want to you want to anchor there and fan cast all around until you catch a fish right in. You, 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 we, we hooked a nice fish on the troll over here and it was when we stopped our lures which indicated it was a change of speed a slow speed so we went right to the cast right where we trolled and trolling is going to show you where and when the cast and that's what happened to us today in case he's just on fire in this casting position here he's got about four or five fish in the last six or seven casts nearly every cast he's popped one I have another fish on we switched to a different area because we saw some fish on the radar see if this is a walleye yep flip this guy in we found another uh uh, school of fish so uh, we didn't troll we trolled for like a couple minutes and we found we looked on the uh, radar or whatever and we saw some schools of fish and again I was casting right out here looks like I had another walleye one on oh, your um, very next cast yes looks like they're a little closer to the boat flip them in here we're not getting real big fish but we're getting a lot of action now yep Hold that one up, Casey, so we can see it. Looks like I have a big Y. If it's a Y, it's... Oh, it came off. Dang it. Dang it. It came off. Oh. That was a huge Y. It even got some run on me, too. Oh, man. It almost felt like a snag, but it wasn't because I felt fighting. Looks like I have another fish This on. is just seconds after Casey just lost that fish. I think it was maybe 10 seconds later, you, you put your jig back down there. It's a little guy. The one you lost was, was like huge. you had your rod bent over. Huge. We might be on another school here. Good job, man. Taking the kids fishing is always fun and a memorable trip. I enjoyed watching Emily catch those white bass, especially when she was catching two at a time. As you saw, Casey was pretty excited about catching all those walleyes casting on the structure. We found the fish by trolling and realized on this particular day they wanted a slower speed control. Once we had the right depth and speed control dialed in, I think Casey called eight walleyes on 12 casts. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Thanks for watching. For more information on the structures that were fished today and where we caught the fish, go to Fishity and send a buddy request to Structure Fishing. And for a limited time, get 50% off any premium membership at fishity.com forward slash shell. Enter promo code shell. Oh,